So today we're gonna make a Kringle knot on the board that we made in the previous video. Again, my name is Billy. My friends call me Billy B. And you will need rope. There are many kinds of rope. The thicker the rope, the heavier and more substantial your, your uh, finished product will be and the less times you need to go around. But on a board similar to this, my original board, which I showed in the last video, I put on a two by six, I made these items. This is like a large coaster right here to put on uh, under, you know, a big coffee mug. Here's a little bit smaller of a coaster. I use different types of ro different rope. So this, I went around four times. And this is very similar to a 550 cord, para paracord. And then this is laundry, like a laundry uh, rope that I found decorative and I played with. But I only went around twice just to see, you know, what size and stuff it would be. But it can be like a smaller coaster or decorative thing or a little frisbee. Who knows? And then this one, I used the same cord as I used in this one. I only went around twice. I made a little loop at the top. I kind of melted it up here. To hold it up like that to make a little Christmas decoration. I actually made these, a bunch of these, a few years back using white laundry rope. <clears throat> and I had two ends and I sealed them by melting them up here. And I tied a red ribbon right about there on them. And I hung them on my tree, and they look like little white snowballs on my tree. I also attached them on top of gifts that I gave to people. And that was a really nice touch. A lot of people really enjoyed those. They said they did. So Now I'm going to show you how I make these on this board. Which is, you know, a template that will hold it in place while we work the rope. So to do it, you're going to need a lighter to melt your ends. You're going to need a scissors to cut your rope. If you have a problem with arthritis or anything, to pull your rope through, you may need some needle nose pliers. You'll need your board that you made, which I see one of my hands is bent. Let's fix that. There you go. So your board and your rope. So today I am using rope that I got pretty inexpensively. I bought this 50 foot of rope from a flea market <laughs> for a dollar a bundle. Okay, I bought a lot of bundles, but you find the end of your rope, it's going to be one end or the other. Wasn't this one didn't pull out easy, usually it'll pull out easy. This end's already melted. They have a wonderful machine for, you know, cutting rope and instantly melting it. I don't have that kind of money to waste. I probably could, but I don't want to. I just can't. I can't justify it in my mind. I'm a little cheap. And you'll need a yardstick. I always have a piece of tape on my yardstick. I shove this end through to kind of hold it. I don't want to have to pull through 50 feet of rope to do my knot knowing that I will never use 50 foot of rope. So I'm unwinding my rope and I'm going to start measuring it. So going to go by multiples of three so that I've got three. Toby, stop. It's my daughter's dog. He's whining. He wants to go in on the sofa. 
there's six. There's nine. Of course, this doesn't want to work out real well for me. There's 12. Okay, we're just going to have to start this again. Because that's just going to make me nuts. Nothing goes perfect, people. When you want it to. That's just how it works. To get these kinks out, you're going to run your hand on a section of rope until it feels looser. And as you notice, it's getting looser and looser where it's laying flat. So I'm going to keep going and have this all fall out the end of the rope. This is just, you know, something you got to deal with. And then it's all nice. Now this should be easier. All right. So we're going to take this back on here. And go three, six, nine, twelve. Fifteen. What are you doing to me, guys? Fifteen. Eighteen. Twenty-one. Twenty-four. And roll it to another 12 inches. What I like to do until I'm completely done is I like to get a piece of tape. Kind of put it on the 12 inch, you know, so the 12 inch mark is in the center. And I wrap this around. like so, and I cut that right in the middle and it keeps my rope from fraying. Ta-da! And I didn't have to melt it right away. So I take my extra rope I'm not using. And I wind it up. wind it up so it's nice and will store easily look at the last one pull this under it tighten it and that's ready for the next one so this one we can pull off our yardstick electrical tape love that stuff Okay, now we have it. Now for this end, I know they cut it and they sealed it. But I'm going to put a piece of tape over it because it will still fray. And while you're working your rope, you don't want it to fray. That just becomes a real big mess. This is like a laundry rope, uh, rope that you can find in fancy colors. Um, I got this in purple and green um, and like a mint green, a darker green, and the purple. I've also seen it in yellow and pink and all kinds of colors. See, here's it in pink. And then you can also find 
you know, use paracord, which I found this in paracord. And this one's kind of neat in paracord because the white bits in it glow in the dark, which is cool for camping. Sorry, I dropped my rope everywhere, and if I just leave it laying there, my dogs will chew it up. All right, so I'm going to take my tape, another piece of tape, and I'm going to put it on an end of my rope, and I'm going to begin my knot. I am going to put this between 8 and 9, and just kind of tape it down right there. Or you could tape it on the side or on the bottom, whatever's more comfortable. But for since we're using it on a table, I'm going to tape it on the top. I don't need the pliers. I don't need my lighter right away. I don't need the scissors anymore. We're going to need some space to work. My husband calls it slinging rope when I do this. So I'm going to go to the number one. I'm going to bring my rope. I'm sorry. Correction. I'm going to go between 9 and 10, and I'm going to come to number 2, and I'm going to bring my rope around number 2, and I'm going to go over this rope that's already laying there, and I'm going to come around number 1, and I'm going to take number 1 to number 4. Do you see what I made? It looks like a pretzel. Keep that in mind. I am now going to get what we will call the working end of the rope. The other end. I'm going to put this stuff out of my way. Okay. So, with my working end, I'm going to come around four. I'm going to go under right here. Let's see if I can tilt this up so you can see. I'm going to take my working end under. I'm going to go over this inner cross to my last pretzel. And I'm going to go under the other side. So you see how that goes? So I went under, over, under between nails two and three, okay? And I am going to pull the rope through. I always like to keep hold of my end, my working end, so it's easy to find, saves me time. And I'm gonna pull my rope through. Yes, all 25 feet. The good news is it gets shorter as you go. Hold that over the four, pull it, through. Oh, it got stuck on eight. Okay. You're going to pull it through. And now you're going to take it around three and over the two ropes here. And you're going to go to six. You're going to bring your working rope around six. You're going to go this up here. under get your working end go over and then come under between four and five now we're gonna pull our rope through just like this So we're going to keep that around six. And you will learn that in time, you will have to, you know, spin your rope a little bit to get it to lay right. To untangle it. And like we did the first time, I just run my hand over it to get those goofy little kinks that will build up in it all the way out so they fall out the end. All right. Now I have 
one pretzel here. So there's a pretzel. I have one around three and four, right? Now I've got to finish one. I'm going to come around five and I'm going to go to eight with my working end. I'm going to go under over this and under between six and seven. So this, we went under, over, under. You're gonna hold rope kind of in place and you're going to sling your rope, sling it. This is great for relieving tension, just a FYI. Okay, then we're gonna come around seven. We're gonna lay on top of the two ropes, the rope that's wrapped around eight, so we'll go over this one and over that one, and we're going to come to 10. But we need to go under our start. So I'm gonna sling that through. We'll call this the magic where you join all your pretzels together, okay? Call that the magic. We're gonna come under here, the rope you started with. I hope you can see that well. I don't, okay. So here you're gonna go over, under, and over. So over, under, over. You're gonna bring it to here and you're gonna go under, over and then under here I like to put my hand like this kind of hold it and I swing my rope through swing it swing and of course my rope twists so I may have to kind of roll my rope as I pull it through so it'll lay nice and you just kind of Make, try to make all of your pretzels the same size. And there, you have, you have made your basis of the Kringle Knot. To continue on your working end, you're gonna bring it, and you're just gonna follow this line. So bring your rope, your working end through, and sling it. So technically, you only have to think to get it started. Once you have your one ring all the way around and you get to the magic part, the rest is just following right alongside the rope you've already done. So over, under, over, under, over, under. So I've wrapped around that part of the pretzel and I'm pulling it through. See it's starting to twist, so I'm going to untwist it and get that out. Because the more you go around, you want to make sure it goes in and stays nice. Now I'm going to take the working end and follow this one around. And it'll go under, over, under. And you're going to pull it through. Untwist it. Untwist it. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to go through here. Please don't get frustrated. Please remember this is a video and you can pause it. <laughs> you know, you can rewind it. You can do all kinds of things. <laughs> Play it multiple times. But once you get the hang of it, you can get these done pretty quickly. 
especially if you're doing a bunch for, you know, like I did 50 white ones as little Christmas ornaments. And before it was all said and done, I had it down to, you know, 10 minutes a piece. I did it while watching Lord of the Rings series. <laughs> okay. So we're slinging, slinging. Okay, a little bit more about me. I worked with older Girl Scouts when I worked in Girl Scouts as a leader. I dealt with the kids that, you know, a lot of leaders don't want to deal with, the teenagers, because, you know... <laughs> Teenagers can be difficult and opinionated. And I worked with inner city teenagers from a rough neighborhood. And uh, they turned out to be the best troop ever. Those were the kids that needed it the most. And I haven't had a troop in years and those several of those girls keep in contact with me and uh, they're grown they got kids of their own and stuff and married and I just seem to collect kids and that's okay I inspired them to be better people and I taught them wonderful things and maybe now I can teach somebody else some wonderful things because I am a jack of many trades, master of a few, the ones that could hold my interest long enough to master. Rope was one of them because while I was a Girl Scout leader, I was also a, a trainer, an outdoor trainer for Girl Scouts, and um, I taught outdoor skills, which I love. And I was a canoe instructor with the American Canoe Association for many years. I mainly just taught uh, the Girl Scouts at summer camp. Took my troop canoeing many, many times. Um, one of the girls in my troop was old enough and actually went through a training course with me with the American Canoe Association love that girl even though she got knocked out almost knocked out by a tree branch funny story save it for another day just hearing me mention it will make her chuckle I'm sure and we're almost back to complete our second round Before going into the Army, I was a nurse's aide. I did home health care, and I worked in a nursing home for a while, and I worked in a hospital for a while. That was in the 80s. That was a long time ago. And then I went in service. Then I raised a bunch of kids and did scouting. And I've had all kinds of jobs since then. And that's fine. I like to learn new things on a regular basis. I feel that everybody should learn something new every day. I get kind of depressed and stuff when I'm not learning something new. I just feel like I'm wasting my time unless I'm learning something new. And now you can see we're around, completely around twice. The neighborhood dogs are barking. Now mine's whining because he can't go play with the other dogs. But he scares the other people because he's a Great Dane Shepherd mix. But I love him when he runs. He looks like Scooby-Doo. Cracks me right up. Okay. So now I'm going go to go around a third time. And then I'm going to take it off my board and show you how to tighten your knot. Secure the ends, make the finishing touches, and we'll have a completed mat. So 
so once I'm finished, uh, oh, and here's a neat little thing. I just recently graduated. I got my degree on Christmas Eve, this past Christmas Eve, in business management and entrepreneurship because I want to start my own business. And no, the YouTube channel is not my business. I do this for fun and for family and friends, especially now that everybody's kind of stuck in the house, stuck at home. It'll give them something new to do, keep next occupied and keep the mind fresh with learning something new. So now we're going around. As it gets thicker, yes, it gets a little harder to pull it in, but remember what side your rope needs to be on. Don't let it slip into one of the other rope's slots. So for the Kringle knot, this is keeping it on the outside. When I start doing some of my other knots that I've made boards for, you understand that sometimes mid knot you'll go from being on the outside to being on the inside but that's for a later episode and that's a much different knot get all these little kinks out yeah I got I live near an airport usually they're not that loud but whatever okay so now pull this through sling it sling okay it's starting to curl so let's uncurl pull and twist pull and twist Oops. do not be on that wrong side twist Work this goofy twist through to the end. Have it fall out the end. I have fairly long nails. I actually trimmed them recently so they're not as long as usual. So I can usually pinch down in there with my nails my fingernails and pull the rope out. For those of you that lack the nails and stuff, you can use those needle nose pliers. I don't need that just yet. So, so far I have completed two of my pretzels. with going around three times. But now there's three. One, two, and three pretzels complete going around three times. Now I'm heading into the fourth one. Gunner, quit whining. Those kids are scared of you. You can't go play with them. They're scared of you because you're, you're a big clunk, clunky monster. Yeah, they just don't know. You just want to love them and play, huh? He's such a good boy. But he gets so excited about little kids. He just runs right up on them and doesn't realize, you know, he doesn't stop as fast as he would thinks he can, plows into him, knocks him over, and then licks him to death. But I'm sure, you know, if there was tension and stuff, like somebody tried to break in my house, <laughs> he would defend. But most of the time, he's just a big, goofy Scooby-Doo. I swear we should have called him Scooby-Doo, but we call him Gunner. 
We adopted him from the uh, from the pound, and they called him Tank. But he was still a puppy, and he was just plowing everything over. Huh, Gunner? Who's a good boy? There's my good boy right there. He is, he is just a big lover. He does know not to, not to knock me or my my mother over, or because uh, I have some medical issues from the military, minor stuff. Most of the time, not all the time. Sometimes it seems a little serious, but I got a lot of arthritis. Not in my hands, thank God. Okay, <clears throat> now we have gonna go around our last pretzel and then we can finally pull it off the board and prepare. To put an end to this project. So we're going around the very last pretzel and yes, it gets a little harder. And it's nice that you can slide it up and down on the nails. So you can, you know, reach underneath to get your rope to go where you want it to go. And now we are back at the beginning. We have gone around three times. So I hope you can see that well. Lay it down nice and flat. There you go. We've gone around three times, all the way around. So now to remove the rope from the board, just pull it out a little bit and get it off the board. And it'll pretty much hold its shape. We can set the board aside. And there's our knot. Did you see how we got these big holes here? Maybe you can see them better on the white table. We gotta, we gotta tighten those up a little bit. So we're gonna start with our, our starting end that was taped to the board. Correction, our working end. I'm gonna bring it around and bring it down through here. just like I was following the other one. And I'm gonna bring up our starting end up through and drop it down through that hole so that we have three continuous right there. But I'm gonna start of tightening up our knot to get rid of these holes by starting with our starting one. So I'm gonna shorten it up a little bit. So I just got a little bit back there. And I'm just gonna kinda of pinch it over in my hand and I'm gonna pull it through. And I'm gonna work first on all the interior ones. I'm gonna pull it through. And I'm gonna tighten up my first pretzel. So that I have tightened up the holes in this one. So my pretzel goes this way. And I've tightened up the holes in that pretzel. Now I'm going to go to the next pretzel. And I'm going to pull the holes through. Start snugging up that side so that these ropes that had a hole are now close. And I'm going to pull. 
pull it through around if you have arthritis in your hands this may be a little rough but you could use the pliers make sure you're using the inner rope of each pretzel then you're going to pull it through this side now we have Tighten this one up so there's no holes like on the other ones. So that's pretzel number two. Now we're going to work on pretzel number three. Bring that loop through. Snug up this one. And that one comes through to this one. Now when I'm, when I'm tightening up, big thing to remember, if you need to take a break, you take it your break before you take the finished product off the board. Once you start this tightening, you can't get up and walk away from it. You'll lose your spot. You'll end up screwing it up, having to take apart the whole thing and start over again. Learned it the hard way. Please learn from me, folks. Okay, so now I am going here. So I got three pretzels snugged. I am working on pretzel number four. That's one, two, three. I'm on pretzel four. There is five, a total of five pretzels in this Kringle knot. Now I'm on the fifth pretzel. Okay, I have made it all the way around one of all the inner rope. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to do the middle rope. So this comes in and now it's the middle rope. So I'm going to grab the middle one there and I'm going to pull it through and that will finish in tightening up my last pretzel. Okay, now this, whoops, wrong one. This comes up here and it's the middle one. Please keep them in their selective slots. Now I'm gonna pull it through this way. Mom, I'm videotaping, so please be quiet. Go potty, Delta. All right, now I'm pulling this through on this side. Coming around on this side. Pulling it through on this side. Just following your ropes like you've been doing since you started this. Now we're back at our beginning. 
So now we're going to tighten up the outer loops. everything lays nice and flat so you will notice it's like lace all your outer loops have extra space in them now we're going to tighten those close up and then we'll be ready to finish our project maybe i was holding it too high but you see the it's like lace all around the outside so now we're going to tighten that up oops wrong one this oh this comes down and around to here It is very snug, but that's what's going to help it hold its shape better if it's nice and snug. Pretzels completed completely. One hump on the third. And there. I'll pull this through. Now we're going to pull this one. Through there. And we're going to pull this one. Through there. Here, right, pull this one through here. And that's the last one. We have snugged up our entire knot. So that's your front and that's your back, your starting end and your finishing end. Yes, I know. I always have extra rope in case I decide I want to go around more than, you know, a certain amount of times. I could actually take this around four times. I just didn't want to for this training video. <clears throat> but if I did end up taking it around four times, I would have pulled it off the board while it was still kind of loose, then taking this rope around four times and then begun tightening. But for this video, we're going around three times. All right, so I'm gonna pull off this tape. I'm just using regular masking tape. I actually prefer using electrical tape. It's easier to get on and off. And it repositions fairly easy. So at this point you'll need scissors and a lighter. So I like to pull down the covering. There's always cotton in the middle of the rope or it would just be ridiculously flat and lifeless. That is not enough. I'll put down a little more and I'm not going to count the, the colored outer, just the black middle.
this takes me a little longer because I do shake a little bit. Okay, and then you just kind of pull it back out. I want to light it. See how quickly it melts? Yeah, it's flaming. And I'm going to put it out and stick it. With the metal part of my lighter. That's why there's all kinds of stuff stuck on my lighter. Melted onto it. Nylon, polypropylene, whatever the stuff's made of. Okay, so there's one melted end right there. Now we're going to do this one. So I'm going to cut it up there. Set my extra pieces aside. I'm going to kind of pull the outer, which will instantly fray outwards, down. And I am going to trim that black gunk. The inner body of the rope. I'm going to pull that outer back out. And have it up a little bit, up off the finished product. I'm going to light that bad boy, let it burn, and then smash it down. Use the metal end. And see, I have my two finished ends sealed. And it is complete. It is hard. But it's nice. And there's a coaster. Thank you for coming along and watching my video to the end. If you like what you see, please hit the, the like button. If you'd like to subscribe to see anything else I come up with, hit that subscribe button. And thanks for coming on the journey. I wish you all the best. Take care.